The basics of data packs, something that has happened since 1.116 in Java Edition Minecraft. There are a lot of places and ways you can get data packs. Uh, I've found, I've had some luck looking around on YouTube and seeing people review different data packs. And uh, one of the most common places that you can find any kind of Minecraft resource is Planet Minecraft. And you can go here and they actually have a data pack section and you'll notice, you know, subsections of that. Uh, it's very important that you get updated data packs because they've been out for a few versions now and uh, there are some that are even designed for 1.7, I'm sorry, 1.17 and there's going to be even more updates. Anytime they update the block models, like 1.17 is going to change how they generate caves and the world height. Anytime that kind of update happens, things like data packs will be updated as well. In old worlds, you can probably load an old world into a new version, but you probably can't use an old data pack on a new world successfully. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about data packs is that they build into the directly into the Minecraft engine. And the way that I've made use of data packs, there are a lot of ways you can use them, is to change the terrain generation. So if you want to create alien or interesting worlds. So one of the ones I'm going to show off today is this many more biomes, which I found here. I actually found it through a YouTube video and then it didn't work from the download there, but I went to the, the designer's uh, page here and you'll notice they explain what it will work for and the versions it will update on, compatibility. Uh, a lot of authors are very really dedicated to working on their data pack. They do a good job and so you can contact them for help, etc. So I could download this here and uh, I'll show how to install it in a minute, but let's first show what it looks like in game. So um, I've just done this locally. Each individual single player local map can use its own data pack. One of the major things I discovered that is a problem is if you run a server, the whole server will use the same data pack uh, based on your root world. So if you put the data pack in like the world file or whatever you call your, your hub or spawning world, uh, it will propagate to all the other worlds and, and they will behave similarly. So you can't, to my knowledge, use multiple data packs on the same server, even if you have multiple worlds through something like Multiverse. So kind of a downer there, a, a reason you might want to use Biomes of Plenty or some other uh, mod or solution to this. Anyway, if I go to single player, uh, for the record, I have the base Minecraft textures on here. Uh, I do, it is fabric, so I've got things like a mini map and I'm running shaders. So the shaders make it look a little bit nicer, but I can turn them on and off as a, as a demo. So this uh, many more biomes is the one that I was just talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and load up a world. It will give you this warning, of course, saying that you're using experimental settings. And I'm just gonna say, I know what I'm doing because it doesn't really matter if this world dies. Uh, and you can see it right here, I've already started in on top of a tree. And these are not a new block. This is dark oak leaves. You'll notice if I select it, it gives me the green, but they look pink like peach blossoms. Um, and you can kind of see in my mini map up here, I can make that big. This is an entire little biome sliver here that has been created by the data pack. Um, and the way the biomes generate in this data pack have to do with the, the um, temperature and, and humidity and some of the other properties. So you'll notice over here, uh, I can go to this sort of jungle coast. Let's, let's look and see what it says. Um, this is tropical islands. This is a tropical island biome. And here we have like a river next to it. And they probably call this like peach blossoms or something. Let's see what this one is. Here we go. It's the cherry blossom grove. And then over here we have these really cool funky mountains. These are one of my favorites. Uh, it's, it's got like this sort of purple alien like looking mountains. Uh, and then <laughs> look at these. This is actually another biome that they've got in the overworld here that has like mushrooms and I forgot the name of these things, these glowing mushroom blocks. Here we go, shroom light. Um, so just looking at what these are called, here we go. We have the lush mesa and over here, the glowing forest. So all of this was generated and if you look at the map, you can kind of see they blend pretty well. So the, the borders are, are you know semi-organic. It will still be a definitive line, but like if there's a cliff in one and it goes into another, so let's see if I can sort of show that. Um, it doesn't just cut off. There's no chunk block edges. Like it just kind of blends into the other. And so this is because it's using the same seed and it's using the Minecraft generator engine. So this is different than like if you were to generate this in World Painter and plop it in, you'd have like the edge of the world that would start using the other generator at that edge. This is all the same generator. So I could fly for miles in it and it would continue to generate uh, different areas. And sometimes they're well related, sometimes not. So this is like a as if a volcano popped open here. Uh, if I go here and like this is cool, this is the caldera or whatever, the volcano, uh, you know, you can see at the top and all the trees that got burned from it. Um, and there's, you know, some funky, silly stuff like we have uh, some zombie horses here. <laughs> you know, it will generate in the biome. I think is this, what is this? This is, um, what did I, I, I have um, uh, obsidian, of course, right? So it creates obsidian blocks. 
and I think I can go over here and it will get to a cold biome or here's, here's sort of a desert rock thing. This is one of the alien surface biomes that I've been using for the server. So pretty cool stuff. This is called like dirt pit, I think is what this one is. Um, so how, how does it make all this? How does this work? Let's, uh, oh actually before we do that, I have one other one I wanna show because it does something else that's pretty neat. This one's called better biomes. And this is making more use of uh, not just using the generation of the biome, but also generating the objects within the biome. So you can generate a forest, but you can also say, here's how I want the trees to look in that forest. And it's not just using like a single schematic file for every tree like we would have done it in previous versions. It's actually algorithmically, you can see it where it says successfully fill blocks. It's actually building these trees on the fly as, as I get over there. So it's sort of lagging for me to jump, yeah. So this one is very intense with the shaders on. See how the, the, the sky is starting to populate? Yeah, that's, that's my view distance. That's the computer taking the hit. So this is not good for like, like, you know, crappy Chromebooks. <laughs> this is, you gotta have an adult computer to do this kind of biome. But it actually generates these enormous trees and they all look different. They're all just designed uh, based on uh, code, which I will show where that is. So this is pretty freaking neat. This is what we've wanted for ages. And it's now baked into the game and the default. You, I, I'm running like all kinds of plugins and stuff, but you could be running basically vanilla and this stuff would happen, which is awesome. Um, increase your RAM, <laughs> that is an important thing. Okay, uh, so let's get out of that. So how is this looking uh, on the computer side? So if I were to download this thing, here we go, I can open that up and you can see it contains this data. This uh, pack.mc meta is important. You see this in texture packs as well. Uh, this pack format is the version. So this six is actually corresponds to 1.16. If it were a seven, it would be 1.17. If it were a five, you get the idea. Um, so that has to do with the uh, version it will work for it, how the system will recognize it. And here we have just our, our thumbnail file. But then if we dig down into this, we can see all the different data. The Minecraft folder is the default Minecraft performative data of how it generates dimensions. And I'm not sure what tags are. Um, and then MMB, which is where it has the different dimensions, world generation, structures, all the stuff, the loot tables. Heck, I guess if you kill a zombie horse, you might get different loot. All that stuff is in here. So uh, rather than look in the, the one that I just downloaded, I'm gonna show you where it shows up in the system and how you were gonna install it. So you would download that data pack uh, and like most of the time you would go, I, I did, sorry, start and run. So Windows button and R is your hacksaw way of doing it. Um, and you type percent app data percent and that's gonna bring you to the secret super hidden Minecraft folder. Talk about bad usability. Uh, and in here we have saves. And you can actually see more some of the times I've unpacked things, but here we go. We have better biomes and more, many more biomes. And if we go into that, we can look and see data packs. So the, every world has a data packs folder and that's where we would stick this. So we would stick this many more biomes. That's what's in the zip file. We can go in there and dig down into it and we can look at the different components. And so if I dig down far enough, if I go down to world gen, uh, let's go to biomes and we can see the cherry blossom grove. So that one we started off on. It's a JSON file. So this is actually not very complicated code. Um, I don't know the best way to, can I zoom? Yes, I can zoom, ha Hopefully you can see this on the video. All right, so um, it has some things like the effects, like it makes an ambient cave effect sound when you're there. Um, the features that can generate there. Some of these, like the Minecraft Lava, Lava Lake, that's a standard Minecraft generator engine uh, piece. So that will generate on its own. This MMB Lake Water Uncommon, that's, it's, that's through the data pack. So these are examples of mixtures of things of like it's gonna generate some of the standard Minecraft stuff mixed in with some of the cool data pack stuff. Um, we have you know, spawners and you can kind of go down. There's actually not that much in this. This is uh, just what happens in the cherry blossom biome. But this gives me some hints to some of the other things that are gonna happen in there. Of, uh, let's see, I'm looking for some of these. Yeah, so this MMB colon cherry grove trees so those are the specific generation of the trees. So how do you get those trees that look a given way? So it's doing a couple of things. One, it's uh, generating like the wood in a pattern. And then two, it's laying down the leaves and telling them to look a certain color. Minecraft actually already had that ability. Like if you look at uh, water in a swamp biome, it looks kind of green. And you look at water in like the ocean biome and it looks different shades of blue. And so that's actually already, always been built into Minecraft since like 1.13. They're just allowing you to change it and mess with it here. So I don't believe that's under world gen biome. We gotta look under, I think it's configured feature. Uh, it might be structure feature or feature. I'm not sure which, let's see. Um, cherry blossom, cherry grove. Here we go, so flowers and trees. So let's see how it generates the trees. 
So here we go. Now look at how, how many levels in we're going. This is kind of not human readable or human editable without, like if you're just adjusting the numbers, that's not a big deal. Like if we want to make the upper size two instead of one, you know, that's easy enough to do. So hacky, hacky modding is easy. If you want to design this from the ground up, not so easy. So I'm going to show you a slightly better way to do design ground up, but it's still very, um, there's no visual editor for it. So it's very like, change it, generate it, see what happens, who knows? It might do what you want, might not, I don't know. Uh, documentation will vary by these. So, you know, it's kind of like many things. It's like when you find code on the internet, lots of open source people just assume you somehow magically know what they were thinking. They don't tell you. Um, in fact, I don't know if it's even possible to comment in these JSON files. Okay, so, uh, right, anyway, they, they're, well, let's see if we can look at one of these. What are these doing? So, uh, this is for the ocean floor world generator. So this is like making the ocean floor that biome. Uh, I was gonna try to find the tree. Oh, this is the trees. I guess it's telling us height map. Oh, sorry, that's how it's determining the height. So actually it's it's where the tree is building relative. So it has nothing to do with the ocean. Uh, but you can see some of the things in here. Trunk provider state, uh, we're going up on the y-axis. Uh, we're using dark oak logs. You can kind of start to make sense of how it's building it. And this is basically the, the script that builds that tree. And so you can modify it if you understood how it all works. Now I don't. I don't. I'll be first in saying I don't understand exactly. It's going to do like one log on top of each other, but at some point it's going to figure out how to put them out to the sides and build the leaves on top of that relative size. So I w this is actually one of the easier ones. So if you could figure this one out, you could definitely figure out like those big redwoods we were seeing generate on the fly. Okay, uh, so how would you do this a smarter way or an easier way than just doing JSON editing in te the text editor? That's where we have this thing. So that up on GitHub, we have this wonderful editor that they've built here, where if you want to modify any of those subdirectories for how the world works, of so like the dimension that you're in, that that um, you actually wouldn't do very often. That's just overworld, underworld, uh, like like the, the nether, the end. Um, I think there's the debug world, I think is its own dimension, and then the overworld. It, that, that will adjust things like where your lighting comes from, or like in the nether, there's that kind of that smogginess, like that red haze that's there all the time. Like you can generate that if you wanted on your entire world if you wanted to, which is kind of crazy. Super potentially useful for Whimsy because if you want to have an atmosphere that you can't see through because it's all smoggy you know, and red, we can do that. If we go to world gen, we can start seeing some of these things I was looking at. So like structure feature, I can click on this and it knows some of these things that exist. Um, so I can search through some of the presets. You'll notice it's generating the code over there. It helps me, like instead of me having to write the code and worry about if I missed a space or a semicolon, I'm generating it based off of these elements here. So um, Bastion relevant, uh, Remnant, I should be able to change this. So if I do type, I can do, yeah. So now it's got my, what, what I, I can still call IntelliSense. It's just smart suggestions based on the root of the word you're typing. Most IDEs do this now. Uh, so you type Minecraft colon, it's like, here's all the possible things you could put in this field. We could do an igloo, we could do a shipwreck. You can see these are the kinds of structures we could have then uh, that would generate in there. Um, oh, now I screwed it up. I think I can reset it, but if I, I let's do mansion. What's that gonna do? Config. Oh, presets, mansion. Reset, ha <laughs> okay. That's what the dots do. Um, I, I couldn't remember what was under config. So. Uh, start pool. Uh, I don't actually know what that does, um, but size probably gives you a sense of like how big this thing is going to be. Um, so there's different variables underneath it. Um, and you could look at all these different pieces. I think you can look all these up individually to find out what they all do. Um, but it is at least it alleviates some of the load of modifying those JSON files and that you can know one, what variables could go within a section. And then two, you can edit them without screwing up your config file. So as I found with like editing our citizens config, like if you put one wrong comma, the whole thing breaks. There is no parsing detection at all on these things. You can dump it in an external generator like this is doing, um, but you have to then like kind of go like line by line to find your problem, uh, which is a really stupid way to do editing and debugging. So this is a way to help prevent some of that. Um, and also, presumably, you could look at, like, uh, I believe you can dump it on the code side. So you could take somebody else's code, dump it in, and see what it generates on the left side and, and uh, compare. So these are the tools I found to do it. Uh, I haven't spent the time to figure out, like, how do I generate my own tree? But this is something that could potentially be done to create new worlds in an automated fashion because they're JSON files, which means you could have some external program generating them. 
So I'm waiting for some young, rich, enterprising programmer to come out and create the GUI version of this, where you're like, I'm gonna, you know, drag in, I'm gonna paint a tree. And, and then it's gonna figure out how to generate trees like that. And you could give the painted tree some variables. You say, I want, uh, my leaves are gonna vary between one and four blocks. And it would know how to generate that in the JSON code. And it would just kind of spit the code out from you drawing it in like a paint equivalent editor. That could be doable because of this open format that they've used. So pretty exciting uh, results in these pretty cool biome examples, uh, these worlds that do all kinds of stuff. And that even, I, I think, it, you, you know, you can kind of do adventure map-ish stuff. Like you notice the drop tables are modified. Like the, a lot of the behaviors of the AI can be tweaked in ways to create some pretty unique experiences. So uh, there you go. That is the data pack demo.